I think that almost every calculus student comes across some version of this question. Prove that there are always two points on opposite sides of the equator that are at the same temperature. Usually this comes pretty early in calculus as part of introducing concepts like smoothness and continuity, and with a little guidance is treated like an obvious and logical characteristic of continuous functions, something like the intermediate value theorem or the mean value theorem. This is actually a simplified version of the borsuk ulam theorem, which generalizes this idea to higher dimension spheres, which is probably a little beyond the third week of the first semester of calculus. 3 blue one brown has an excellent video that goes much more in depth into the theorem, so that's not what I'm going to do here. You see, when I first saw this concept, it looked like this. Without the guidance that some texts or teachers provide to gain intuition or the context of knowing the borsuk ulam theorem, or having good visualizations like 3 blue one brown provides, I had a pretty specific reaction when I saw this. You see, this didn't feel intuitive or obvious to me at all, so I immediately sat down and tried to draw counterexamples, which didn't get me very far at first, but started me down a path of developing a simple visual intuition for why this is true. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So here we go. First, create the Earth. Second, draw a temperature function around any circumference line. When viewed from the top down, the temperature is hotter as it moves further away from the center. The actual axis or units or scale doesn't matter much. All that matters is that it follows the rules of a temperature function, meaning smooth and continuous, and that the end meets back up with the beginning because that's how circles work. Next, unwrap the function onto a coordinate axis system so that it looks like the kind of temperature function that we are more used to dealing with. Now the domain of the function is the distance around the circumference of the globe, and the beginning and ending y value will be the same since they actually represent the same physical point on the globe. Since the domain of the function is the circumference, then a horizontal line that is half as long as that will represent points on opposite sides of the globe. If we trace the temperature function with that line, we'll see that both ends hit the function at some point. You can try this with any function that follows the same rules, and you'll eventually see how the horizontal line always has to meet the function at its ends, and that the original fact must be true. Hopefully that moves you one step closer to an intuitive understanding of the borsuk ulam theorem, this question if you come across it in a calculus class, or at least moves you one step further from 